Hello everyone, today we're still talking about the seventh day, the Messianic Kingdom, and going into the eighth day. And I believe Yeshua fulfills both. He's king and priest of the Melchizedek order. He's Melchi, which is king, and king of righteousness, Zedek, it means righteous. So he is of the order of Melchizedek. He's a king and priest. And he sits on high and he rules the messianic kingdom and he rules the uh, eternal kingdom. And where we are going to go into this eternal rest of God, the eighth day represents this, uh, this everlasting kingdom, the eternal kingdom, the kingdom that will never end. The kingdoms of this world will vanish away. The, this world will vanish away. The heavens and earth will uh, dissolve and there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And this eighth day is the, uh, the culmination of all things when all <laughs> things have been put under Messiah's feet. And it says in Proverbs 4, it says, starting with the... Uh, starting with the 18th verse it says but the path of the just is as as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day so the perfect day is this eighth day it it, it is a day that there is no more death there is no more sin there is no more uh there is no more corruption there is no more of the satanic kingdom uh everything is going to be judged and purged and cleansed from the from the face of god from f everything that is uh that is defiled and and that uh, god has separated off he separated the earth he has separated light from darkness because he he cannot dwell where there is darkness where there's profanity and perversion and, and sin. He is a holy God. He's Kadosh. And that means that he is perfect and he is holy. And we are called to be perfect in his righteousness. He Be ye perfect, be ye holy. These are the things that we hear in the New Testament. But in our flesh, we cannot be perfect. In our carnality, we cannot be perfect. But there is a perfect man that is inside of us, that is being conformed to the image of Christ, that is being changed daily and renewed and built up, that is going to dwell with the Messiah, uh, with the eternal God forever. And this man... This eternal, inward, perfect man is being made, uh, made, he's being made new. We are a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. When we look at our outer covering, this is not new. When we think about our attributes and our mindsets and our, and our uh, condition in the body, it's waxing old. It's dissolving. It's it's it is it is uh, soon to perish. The Bible says, so we we don't look at the outward things, but we're looking on the inward things, and we are we are to set our affections on things above and not on the earth because th this is how we grow in grace. This is how we make this man perfect is by applying the blood of Yeshua, by by interacting with a holy God in, in communion with him. He he is developing and growing us up and making us ready for this perfect day when there there will be no more sun, moon and stars. There will be no the the light that will be shining forth it would be messiah himself will be yeshua when we come into his kingdom completely we get glimpses of it we get to experience it and but it's all how we develop this this inward man how we develop uh the uh the perfect man and i'm going to read that because per perfect is not something 
that we can do outwardly. We cannot be perfect. We are, we are too flawed in the flesh, in the carnal, carnality to be perfect. We cannot be perfect. We will stumble. We will fall. We will fall short of the glory of God because we do not understand the essence of God and how perfect he really is. He is, a, he is perfect and he wants us and desires us to be perfect because he made a perfect creation. And he is restoring those things back to uh, to those who want to come into this uh, this eighth day, want to come into the where where you, where we are complete in God. the The Bible says that uh, told Abraham he told Abraham to be perfect. If you will be perfect. Then and follow my ways, and then I will bless you. That word perfect means complete, being made whole, to be to be uh, to not to to uh, to be a whole spirit, soul, and body, to be justified. Because but it, because the Bible says righteousness was imputed to him because of his belief, because of his faith. So. In himself, in himself, he was not able to be made perfect. But if he abide in God and he abide in him through faith and kept himself away from the crooked path, then God was, his promises were that I would make you perfect. You see, the perfection comes when we, by faith, he imputes righteousness to us. He gives us, and we are the righteousness of God. We become the righteousness of God because we draw from him. He is our righteousness. We can't be righteous on our own. Our works are like filthy rags. So being made perfect only comes by this relationship. And the Bible says that Abraham was a friend of God, and he was a friend of God forever. From everlasting to everlasting. Because he, he, he went beyond the carnality. He went beyond the circumstance. He went beyond the mortality. He saw God in a, in a realm in, where there was, no, there was no life and death. There was no light or darkness. There was no, there was no obscurities. There was only a relationship. There was no do's and don'ts. There was no... A, a saint or sinner it was just communion and relationship and God was faithful to faithful Abraham to make him perfect until the day of his redemption but even at that Abraham had to go to his own Abraham's bosom his own he was set apart he had a friendship by he had a friendship with God he communed with God he was a friend, but, he, it, but it didn't take him into the presence of God it didn't take him beyond the supernatural like Moses, where he was he was instantly transfigured into this eighth day, where the where uh, where the angel Michael disputed with Satan over over Moses's dead body, but he was already his spirit and soul was already communing and in in the presence of God, but but. but but there had to be a day of redemption. There has to be a day of, of, of reconciliation. There has to be an, a day of atonement that, whips, that that had to take place through Yeshua, through Messiah, that could restore the Old Testament believers that believed in God by faith, that had had relationship with God by faith, that, that worked out their salvations with fear and trembling, had the fear and awe of God enough that God said, I, I'm going to put you in a holding tank. No, you're not perfect yet in your spirit. You're not perfect yet in your soul where I can abide with you. There, there must be a, a covering. There must be a veil that stands before me and you before I can even interact with you. And that veil is Christ. That veil is Messiah. Yeshua, he veils us with his flesh. And I will interact to you. you. You have faith. You believe I can impute righteousness to you. But 
and, and, and help you along your journey, but it's still going to take the blood of Yeshua. It's still going to take the, 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 the offering that was poured out from his soul because of the life beget life. And, he, and you can only have eternal life by that which is eternal. And he gives us eternal life. Mm -hmm. And so his, and his blood was poured out on the earth so that we can obtain this eternal life. That we can come into the eternal realm of God. So, you know, the Bible says a life for a life, a tooth for a tooth. Because, the, the, you know, the life of the flesh, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And that life must be poured out. But his life was perfect, righteous, holy, sinless life. That came from everlasting, according to Micah 5. Came from the eternal realm. So that the life that he offered was perfect and holy and righteous. So those who were imperfect, those who were blemished and spotted and wrinkled, can step into the, the veil of his flesh and receive eternal life. And now we can come into the presence of God because he's making us anew. He's making us new creatures, new creatures. Now we can go boldly to the throne room of God, not on our behalf, but on his behalf because of the blood of Yeshua. So that brings us into the presence of God. We don't have to be set apart. We don't have to be veiled. Because we are being made perfect in our in our inner man, does that make sense? And we are, we come into the wellness in this kingdom of of, of Yeshua of Messiah. Uh, it, you know, we come into His realm. He shields us and covers us from the wrath of God. As long as we hold to this flesh, we're going. We need the protection of Messiah Yeshua to protect us. But our inner man. Our inner heart can interact with God direct because now he has made us a dwelling place, mm -hmm. a holy sanctuary set apart for him, a dwelling tabernacle for his presence. That sets us apart from the Old Testament believers. The Bible says that the that the uh, Old Testament believers were inspired by God as, as the Holy Spirit moved upon them. They, uh, they spoke the words of God as the Lord speak. They were, the Holy Spirit moved and, and, and on them, but now we have this indwelling presence in us. Mm -hmm. we, it's taken us to a, uh, to a higher place in God. So they, they, they didn't have this indwelling presence. They were not made. They were fallen tabernacles of David. They could not... They were breached. They were broken. They had defiled blood. There was no way of renovating that tabernacle until Yeshua came and offered his blood to purge our sins, to purge our iniquity, to purge us from the self-life, to cleanse us and make us a new, like we would never sin, like we had never been breached. Because it's in the inner man. Hallelujah. It's the inner man that inner dwells with the presence of God. That makes us holy. That makes us righteous. That makes us set apart. And the Bible said, and so that the presence of God, his spirit can live in us. And, and as he is interacting, as we're yielding, he is taking more territory. As we're yielding ourselves, submitting ourselves, then he, we are able to interact with him even more in our members. We will act in righteousness. We'll behave in righteousness. We will, we will choose righteousness. We will submit to righteousness because not in our power, but the power that has been worked in us, that we're able to work out righteousness from within. And it says in first, what does it say? First Peter 1 and 5, it says, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. It says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that ye may, 
He may exalt you in due time. He's exalting us in our inner man. Cast in all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as, uh, as a roaring lion, uh, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that some afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all peace, of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory in, the, in Christ Jesus, after all that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. So we are, so we, he is perfecting us in within. Let's see, it says uh, in Ephesians 4, it says, Till we have come to the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of stature of the fullness of Christ. So Christ is being made perfect in us. Mm -hmm. The Messiah, the, the, uh, the, his kingdom, his kingdom is within. His kingdom is without observation. So Messiah, Mashiach, his blood is perfecting the inner man. Mm -hmm. To house the kingdom of God. Right. And, and, to, and to be a part of, his, you know, the Bible says we are to eat of his flesh and drink of his blood. That is, that is symbolic to state that we are becoming like his nature, his divine nature. We are partakers of his divine nature. So there is a nature change. There's a there there is something going on within a human that has submitted themselves to the, to Yeshua's perfect work in, in perfecting us in our interaction that he that we are we are becoming like him. We are we are being we are being conformed like him. Do you see because we are being made we are being made a new eternal holy beings. And it says in Colossians 1.28, Whom we preach, wearing, uh, warring every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. And it says in 2 Timothy 3 and 17, That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto good works. And in James it says, uh, fought one and two, but who, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, the law of the spirit, the law in Christ Jesus, that is eternal, that is everlasting, that is written upon our hearts, that has been, that it is the covenant of Abraham, it is the righteous acts and moral law. It is it is written upon our hearts, but the the liberty we have is that we are we are developing this man, this inward man, to 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 do righteousness that is be above the law, that is beyond the the outward expressions of the law. But we are but we are being we are being conformed to in righteousness, in holiness. That is not, that is outside of the law. It's out, it's, you know, the law, the law we, we do, we see that we, we, when we look at the law of liberty or look at the law of Moses, we see our sin. But we also see our, we see our depravity, we see our sin, we see our sin nature. And we also see that there is no power within our nature to be able to conform to the holiness of God. All we can do is act morally you know, within our flesh, but it doesn't perfect our flesh. We can act morally, but that doesn't make us not, not a sinner. It doesn't make us not, uh, not under the bondages of Satan. It's, you know, it, it doesn't make us uh, not uh, under the controls of the, of the demonic realm. We just choose life and death. Just like, uh, uh, Derek Prince says there are respectful slaves, but they're all, but they're still slaves. 
You can be a righteous, respectful slave, but you're still under the bondages of Satan's control because he controls all things in this world. Mm -hmm. Even the law that was written down. Mm -hmm. That he can act in, we can act in, uh, in, in right in, uh, you know, in this self-righteousness. But it's not the righteousness of God that is it, that God is wanting for His children. He's wanting us to grow in the perfection of God, in the holiness of God. That is probably way off of our scope to understand how holy God is, how perfect. Because we we tend to just kind of say, "Well, you know, this is good enough." We kind of evaluate things. Uh, uh, you know, on our eye, on, on what we see and, and how we can perceive or others. And, and, you know, it's basically on our perceptions, you know, in our perspectives. But that is not the holiness of God. God his, his holiness is, is far more reaching than what we can obtain in this carn, carnal flesh. That's why the Bible says that he will lift us up. He will exalt us. Not in this life, not that that we will have some kind of uh, uh, some kind of elevated position in this life. It, it means that our spirit will be elevated into the realm of Christ, that we we sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that as the bondages of Satan are released, as the tentacles and the and the and the uh, uh, of Satan and and his devices and and his what he has integrated himself in our flesh and our minds and our souls and our thinking, as we release these things from our lives, as as because you can't you can't be elevated if you're tied up and bound up and and controlled by the things of this world by the by the, the satanic kingdom no you have to be released first be liberated so that you can go into this perfection and and this completeness that God offers we are complete in Christ but we got to move up in God we got to be airborne we got to put all things under our feet but it does it's it's one thing at a time we have to be loosed as as we're being as we're being trained up as we're, as knowledge is increasing in our lives as truth is being increased in our life then we can see and 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 see the the how satan has got into our very uh, souls and into our flesh and as he reveals as Yeshua reveals as the spirit reveals guess what we can break free but that inner man must be must grow up it has to have power it has to have authority but and so what we do we get we go through the uh the the preparation stages of growing up this inner man by reading his word, living by faith, going through the things that we suffer. The Bible says that Yeshua, uh, uh, but he, he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. We, we learn more obedience through the things that we suffer and we submit more to the things of God when we are being uh, afflicted in our souls. And uh, when we're when we're under the fiery trials, of, uh, uh, you know, of of both the world and the satanic kingdom, as fiery trials and 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 persecutions comes and difficulty comes, we see really what things are really are, what really are pulling the strings, what really is affecting our souls, and we see. The Bible says those who have suffered in the flesh will cease from sin because they know that it that that what sin and the <laughs> results of sin will do to a person, right? And, and and the reaping stages and the suffering of our sins will will and, and the bondages that come through our interactions with people that are in sin or our sins ourselves. Well, that the enemy kind of puts a stronghold in our life. He strangles us. He weighs us down. He oppresses us. He he gives us all kinds of uh, of 
emotional difficulties of depression and oppression and 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 just feeling uh, you know kind of weighed down in this life then we come to realize that we're under some kind of control of the demonic and when we understand our sin contribute to that oppression then and and the and and our de being demonized or being afflicted by the demons or being afflicted by the kingdom of darkness when we know that we have uh fraternized with the enemy and we have involved ourselves with sin and we understand that sin is taking root in our lives and is causing destruction that will lead to death if we do not get it under control if we don't expel it that you know because the wages of sin is death and once we understand how sin works within our mind and within our human soul within our bodies and how the enemy uh uses the 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 nature of sin he uses the world he uses people to bind us then when god when god when the light of the holy spirit reveals it then we're able to let get free from it we can see that we don't want to go back to that we don't want to go back to that uh, sin we don't want to act in that sin we want to stay far from that sin because it it's easier to get into sin but it's harder to get out of sin you know it's easier to uh to participate in in things and of this world but it's hard to come out of this world so the more that we fraternize with the enemy more that we come into the realm of the satanic kingdom more that we come into the kingdoms of this world and the babylonian system it's harder for us to to re be uh delivered from it, it and it and it and, and because our minds get so integrated with the babylonian ways of life and it's harder for us to come out of babylon than it is for us to go into babylon because we have been born into babylon and it's familiar to us so there's always this exiting out in the world exiting out of egypt exiting out of babylon exiting out of the kingdoms of darkness but but it but the satan doesn't release his people very easily he makes it harder and harder for people to leave what did he do with the children of israel you know when when uh moses came and said let my people go he made the task even harder for them he enslaved them even more he put the burden on them even more to you know and, and causing the people to lose heart and faint in the process so it's easy it's not as it was easy for them to go into egypt and it was given to them a land of goshen and that they could dwell in but as they intermingled and grown and intermingled with egypt and and grew the body uh, the word says that you know that israel increased in the land of goshen mm -hmm. but they had they were mixed with the egyptian culture and and it was harder for them to come out but as soon as they multiplied what did happen satan got you know started to k try to kill off the children he started to make their burdens heavy he started to oppress them and and to try to enslave them and discourage them so until god uh, provided a deliverer mm -hmm. so it's easier to go into bondage uh, than to come out of bondage it takes the act of god it takes a act of his uh interventions to bring us out of the bondages that we go into mm -hmm. and it says and i want to read each vision four it says till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god oh i'm gonna go four i'm gonna go forward anyway uh it says, and, and we'll go to Ephesians 4, 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we have come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Uh, Thus, henceforth, be no more children tossed to and froed and carried about with every wind of doctrine 
but the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking in truth and love may grow up into all it grow up into him, into Messiah, into Yeshua, and all things, which is the head, even Messiah Christ, for whom the body is fitted, jointed together, and compacted by that which every joint supplied according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So there is a perfect man that is that is being built up inside of us, but we're also are going to be joint and fitted together as a perfect unity, the unity of the spirit. We are to be unified in in the in the unity or the oneness. We have one mind, one accord, in the unity of the faith, one baptism, one God, one gospel. There's only one Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's only you know. There's only one faith. But we have all this diversity, because slight of men have come in and crept in and brought division. And has divided the people and took them off of the faith. Mm -hmm. But those who are being built up in their inner man are going to be fitly joined to those other vessels that are also being built up in Christ. You know, your spirit will bear witness with his spirit that he is the son of God. And that that spirit in you will, will, conform, will confirm with other believers that that same spirit dwells in you and that spirit and your and the holy spirit in you will join vessels together building one perfect man that doesn't it say that in um uh also it says that that the the veil the perfect man let's see uh, that you know the wall of petition being part and being being united. Uh, let me do a partition. Of. That the wall of partition. Let me get that up. Is being is being torn down to unify uh, people mm -hmm. into this unity of the faith that is building up a body, and the head is Messiah. Right. And and the but the body is in the earth. Mm -hmm. But we can't work as a body if we're divided on issues and and on doctrinal issues. And, you know, we're not coming in the unity of the faith. That is why we need the Holy Spirit to unify believers. We need to separate and detach from our carnal mind and be unified in the spirit and have the spirit be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put on the mind of Christ, because if you put on the mind of Christ, you think like him, you're going to fit right where you need to be in the body of Messiah. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to do your own agendas and work out your own salvation in your own way and not come under the headship of Christ, you're trying to work out righteousness. You're trying to work out your own agen agendas or your own ministry or your own way, or you're trying to elevate or have some kind of nor notoriety or, or, or some kind of esteem position, you're going to fail because we are to be servants. God called us to be servants, servants of all, serving the body, serving one another, yielding one to another in submission. It says, so it, um, it says, wherefore remember that ye being eight in times past, this is Ephesians 2, Starting with the 11th verse, it says, Wherefore remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at all, so we, are, we were called uncircumcised. We were Gentiles. We were the Goahim. We were in the nations. We, were, we served other gods. We, we, we were ignorant of of the true god we were alienated from the life of christ the, the from the life of god 
But through the blood of Yeshua, we are now made heirs and co-heirs with him through the blood, not through nationality, not through this blood, not through hum human blood, not through the, the ethics uh, and nationalities of being a, a son of Israel, but we come into the unity of the faith through the blood of Yeshua and being, being conformed to him. And now we are heirs and part uh, and, uh, and co-heirs with him and we he's making us into sons of god he he being the son of god through him is making many sons of god and that's how we come through the blood through the blood but the bible says that the uh but a servant and a and a heir and a child different from nothing because they have no authority, they have no power. They're just servants. They just obey, but they, and and doing the law just strictly, just doing commandments and adhering to uh, Old Testament law, coming under uh, those type of mandates, is is it is conforming you to a servant, but a servant and a child different from from nothing. Because you have not yet come to the unity of the spirit. You have not come into the realm of Christ that is perfecting you inwardly with his blood, with his righteousness. You know, we've got to put on Christ. We've got to, we have to call forth that which is, which is the, the blood of Yeshua is the redemption of our soul. The blood of Yeshua Jesus is our salvation. The blood of Yeshua is our is our sanctification. The blood of Yeshua is our justification. It's through the blood of Jesus that we are heirs and co-heirs with him. It's through the blood. Without the blood, there is no remission of sin. Without the blood, there is no inheritance. You do not come into the kingdom of Israel or into the eternal kingdom of Israel without the blood of Yeshua. You need the eternal life source to be able to, uh, to regenerate and to revive this inner man to, that was dead in trespasses and sin to make you alive in Christ so that you can be, that you can, uh, be born again into the kingdom of God through the blood of Yeshua. We can't come into, into another way. The Bible says we have to be born again. We got to be born into a new life type. The eternal life, the eternal spirit, where the where the man is an immortal man that is going to abide with him forever, that is being made perfect. It's only through his blood, through his righteousness, that he is he is he's given us a blood transfusion into the spirit man mm -hmm. that is that is that is nourishing and developing and creating something outside of this body does that make sense outside of this mortality and so if we focus only on the outward we lack in the in, for the inner because it's the inner that will live on forever so we have to be baptized with the holy spirit we've got to be in field we've got to have the evidence we've got to we got to bear the fruit of the spirit that are, is working out righteousness not by not by obligation not by compulsion but we work out righteousness and the fruits by a nature change that is so different it's not something that i am conjuring up not something that i have to to constantly uh do you know i have to constantly force myself because that's why God puts us in the pressures of life because he wants to remove the old man, kill off the old man. And he wants to purge the old man from the old attributes, the old nature, so that the new man can come alive in holiness and in righteousness and in, in, in the attributes of God. 
We've got to develop the attribute and character of God in love. This is why we talk about the New Testament as the, you know, the God of love, the God of peace. And, and let that be in your mind and heart. Let, walk peacefully. Walk gently. Walk in, 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 the, uh, in meekness. You know, having peace with everyone. No quarreling, no debating. It's all about having where our conduct is being changed. You know, always remembering to walk in the love of God. Submitting to the love of God that is shed abroad in our hearts. That's why we can, you know, we can only go so far in the flesh. We can only endure so far in the flesh. We can only uh, suffer long in the flesh. It takes the endurance of Messiah. You're still working in us. It takes the love of God being shed up on our hearts. It takes the attributes of, attributes of God to get us into in the long haul. That's true. To get us to the, to the other side. To persevere. Because we will give up so easily. We will lose, we will lose heart. We will, be, we, will lose, we will be faint of heart quickly if we're trying to do it in our flesh. We will get tired out real quick. But if we allow, if we yield to to the spirit, we you we yield to the, to uh, to the working of Messiah in us. If we just yield, it's a yielding process. Then He will he, what we have started. He is faithful to complete it in us. The work that He started, we can we can put every action to work, but He is faithful to complete it. See, that's where we want to give him the baton and say, "Hey, take take it and run with it." I just yield. I'm just the. I'm just your vessel. Do Do you see what I mean? And it says, "So we we were that at times we were without Messiah, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, the promise of the eternal realm, the promise of the eternal land." The inheritance that was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This was goes beyond just natural real estate. But we were alienated to the eternal lives of God. To the eternal promises. Having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ ye are whom sometimes were afar off. We were afar off and made nigh. We have been made nigh. Come near by the blood of Christ. We cannot come near to God. To a holy righteous perfect god without a perfect righteous blood that is shielding us that's covering us that is interacting with us for he for he is our peace hallelujah and the and it's the spirit that attaches to to that blood that comes into our heart see the bible says that that yeshua made the way he he opened up the way that the spirit could now come in. It, it's always about the blood on the altar. Yeshua poured out his blood to so the Holy Spirit. And he puts the blood upon the, uh, the uh, doorposts of our hearts. And when the blood is seen, the death angels passed over. But the eternal spirit will come and make his abode. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Without the shedding of blood... Without the blood being put upon your heart, not not ingesting the blood and drinking of the blood, which is uh, the is the uh, the meat of the word, because this is his DNA, the word of God. He's the word made flesh, and when we ingest it, it should be changing us from glory to glory. And when we drink uh, uh, of this new wine of the spirit. When we, when we partake of the new wine of the Spirit, which is His blood, then, and, and then and we apply it, and we apply it correctly, guess what? We're going to be, that eternal Spirit is going to make His abode in us. But we have, that blood has to be present. Mm -hmm. That blood has to be recognizable to that spirit before the spirit of God can come and make his abode in us. If it's not recognizable, then it can't, then it will not come in. It takes the blood to pass, to pass through 
so it can pass through from the eternal realm to the to our realm into our eternal souls our spirit and souls are eternal and an eternal spirit can only abide in an eternal place it cannot abide in our in our carnal flesh it's a re renovating of our of our f soul and body but the spirit is where he dwells and as we yield our members to the spirit of god then then we are working out righteousness according to his will and not our will yes so it says so we are uh so for the, he's our peace and he has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us having abolished in the flesh the enemy the flesh and spirit are at war with each other he mm -hmm. has abolished in the flesh this this uh this this conflict the, the, that our soul is a, is a rebel against God. It's an enemy. The, the Bible says that the carnal mind is, is, is an enemy with God. Mm -hmm. so, so, there is a, so God has separated us from this carnal realm. He's separated from the natural realm. He is separated from the carnality. So because he has separated us, he has separated himself from the carnal realm, now, through the blood of Yeshua and through the eternal spirit, he can make his abode in us, giving us a spiritual mind. Giving us a, a, another mind that we can, we can engage with, that we can follow, we can be governed over. Over, over a spiritual mind. No, we're not, we're not governed by this carnal, this carnal world. We're not governed by our feelings. We're not governed by our, the, the body of death and its appetites. We are governed by the spirit of God through the blood of Yeshua that is giving us and transforming our minds into a spiritual mind. So that, that wall of petition that separated flesh and spirit now has been broken and vent through Christ. So that now that, that we can be, it, now we can interact with him through the blood because now we take upon the soul, the mind of Christ. And now we think like he thinks and we obey like he obeyed and we submit like he submitted. We, we are conformed to him. And, and when, you, when God the Father sees Christ and when he sees that blood and he sees the transformation, he's going to come and make his abode in us also. The Bible says that he is making, that all of them, all, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit will make their abode in us. That's, that's the mystery of the gospel. So it says, for he has in our peace, it says, for, it, for he in our peace who has made both one, we are being unified in the spirit in the unity of the spirit and has broken down the middle wall of petition, flesh and spirit the, the, that wars against each other. And now through Messiah who veils us, according to Hebrews, now we can come into the unity of the spirit and think like he thinks. And that partition that separated us from the eternal realm, that partition that separated us where, where, where Adam and Eve had the, the cherub angel that, that stood in, in front of the garden, that they could not ever go back into the garden. Now that well, that, that veil has been torn from top to bottom. Now that, now we can interact in the, in the, in the garden that was provided for us in, in this intimacy with God, where we walk with him in the cool of the day, where we have this interaction with him. It's not about having a garden where there's trees and there's fruits and there's wildlife. And we're in this like paradise of, of our own mind, but no God's the paradise that God's wanting is the intimacy it's the intimacy where he can interact with you on an intimate level. Yeah, we will experience in real time this paradise. We will experience the paradise of heaven. But right now we get that intimate walk with the Father, that intimate walk with the with with the spirit, the eternal spirit that that Adam and Eve had. That was that was that was cut off. That, that there was a wall of partition. There was a veil that was placed between God and man. Yep. And that wall had to be broken down. But it says, having abolished in the flesh the enemy, in whose flesh? Yeshua's flesh, even the law of commandments, containing in ordinances, 
for to make in himself a twine of one new man. So making peace, like I said, you should offer, he's the kingdom of peace. He is the, he makes a covenant of peace, a covenant of reconciliation to those who would come into this new man. The new man is the new, the, a lot of people say the new man is Christ. But in Messiah, we come into Messiah. We come into Christ, but not only are we come into, we are being formed and fitted together to represent and establish Messiah's work, his body in the earth. Mm -hmm. And we are becoming a new man in Christ. Right. So he is the new man, cutting, destroying this enemy, destroying the, the, this rebel spirit, destroying this carnal mind in his flesh, pulling down the partition so we can come into the realm of Messiah. We can come into Messiah. We can come into him and be formally and fitted and joined together in the unity of the spirit. So his, he is the head and his body is, is that new man that we are to be conformed to in his likeness, in his holiness, in his righteousness. So it, it says, it, he, it says he, even the law of commandments containing an ordinance that now all things have been fulfilled. All things has been, been done away with it. There is no, no need for sacrifices. There's no need for to, to all go up to Jerusalem and make pilgrimage. There is no need for commandments that are, that, that restrains us that we, we can all uh, uh, adhere to. Mm -hmm. We do not have to go to a Levitical priest. We don't have to, a son of Aaron does not have to stand in, in, in proxy for us, for atonement. No, we come to Christ. He has, he has made a way that all these things have been, re, re, been done in him. He is the perfect, excuse me, the perfect man. And we become perfected in him. Does that make sense? Yes. We become complete in him. We become established in him. Because we don't, we don't. We don't, we don't depend on our own righteousness. We don't depend on our own works. We're not trying to, to obtain anything out here in the, in the natural realm. We are, we are, we, this is all done in the spirit. Does that make sense? In the spirit, not in the flesh. And sometimes if we don't under, if we, if we can't get spiritually minded, if we're not thinking spiritual thoughts, if we're not, we're not, if we're not seeing things, from a spiritual point of view, we're going to get lost. Yeah. And we're going to lose a heart and we're going to lose faith. And we're, and we're going to try to reason things out in our carnal intellect. Everything that is happening now is everybody is serving God in, in this in intellect. Everyone's serving God in, in their mind, in their carnal mind, in, in their, 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 uh, their, their, their intellect of intelligence, trying to reason God out in and 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 make Him, uh, you know, fit to their paradigms, and 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 they try to fit this word in their in their own mindsets, in their own perceptions and and uh, carnal reasonings, mm -hmm. and so uh, to be heavily. And, uh, you know, to, to, you know, we, we walk by faith mm -hmm. and not by sight. And so to, to, uh, to always, uh, and I'm not saying that we're not to have some kind of intelligent reasoning and understanding in scripture. We, you know, we, our minds have to be engaged to be able to receive from God, but to always have it. But if our, if our minds are not transformed, if our knives are not renewed spiritually, if we're, if we're not putting on a spiritual mind, we're never going to re receive this word in the in the fullness that it that has been given to us. We are going to over in, uh, um, what was it? Overthink it. We're going to overthink it, but we're going to over intellectualize the scriptures. Uh -huh. 
and that's why we have to be we have to be careful what we how we do things and how we you know we've got to re receive of the spirit it says so anyways in a, so in a, so the body you know is christ but we come into christ and we are being made conformable to christ and this man this new man the body it, it is the body of messiah working in the unity of the spirit mm -hmm. and it says so it's so our righteousness come of him not to say that we abandon moral law or we abandon uh the the scriptures and and we just and we go by blind faith no we you know we conform this is the the word made flesh we conform to this word we conform to the right the righteous ed edicts of this word does that make sense mm -hmm. because this is a theocracy and this and we and he is our king and he has set things in order for us to obey and how to behave one in the earth and how we behave one to another. So we, we're not abandoning instructions, but we're abandoning carnal ordinances that are going that have that have no place in an eternal kingdom. And it says and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, one body by the cross, having slain the intimacy, intimacy there, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off and them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit, one spirit, the unity of the spirit unto the Father. We get to the Father through Messiah, through via through the holy spirit we can't go through anyway as the spirit draws you as the as the spark as holy spirit reveals things to you this is a revealing word it's a revealing word and it and it should draw you near to god and it should draw you to the realm of god mm -hmm. which is spiritual he though he worships those he, he seeks for those who would worship him in spirit and in truth so we've got to come become spiritually minded because we're at war with God when we walk and act and think carnally. Because when we work when we work in carnality, when we work in our carnal nature, when we're thinking like the carnal world, then that then we become an enemy of God. So we have to learn to separate ourselves from the 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 thoughts of this world and the and the and the, the way the world thinks and how our flesh thinks and how our and how our emotions thinks and how uh, how we're being taught on on a wide scale how to think. We got to abandon all that, and so it says. So we have one spirit and now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets and Jesus and Christ. So we are built upon the foundations of the apostles, the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in him because they all prophesied of him. See the the old is the is Messiah Yeshua concealed, and they and the prophets spoke of him, and we are to lay the foundation of our faith and is, and establish our foundation on on the, the 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 words that were spoken about Christ and his offices and what he came to do and his fulfillments. And we we need to give a, we need to give an account for that hope that which is in us. So we need to know what the scriptures are saying. What they you know the Bible says that if you you know if you believe in Moses, you would believe in me because I was writ he writ uh, he he wrote of me. I'm in the volume of the scrolls. Mm -hmm. So everything that was in the Old Testament was all about Messiah Yeshua. And if you're not looking it through and seeing Messiah in, in every aspect of Scripture. 
then you fail because he he is it is a revealed word. He's revealing himself himself in his word. And so and 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 what is to come? What are we our expectations are? So, but we are, but it says, we're no longer strangers. We're not separating anymore, but we are saints. And we're now in the, in the household of God through sonship, not servanthood. We serve one another. We serve in this life, but in that life, we become sons of God. We become heirs and joint heirs in, in the new man, in the spirit of the man, this inner man is a son of God. And it's not a servant because a servant has no, they have no, uh, they have no inheritance. There is no inheritance. And that's why when Abraham said, hey, I have a servant that has been faithful to me, Eleazar from Damascus, and, and, and I will be happy to give him everything. But, but God rejected that because it did not come from his loins didn't come from his bloodline. He said, no, I mean, there is going to be a seed that will come past from you and he will be the heir. And he is the, uh, the uh, heir of promise. And this is who we identify with, with Isaac, the heir of promise, which Yeshua is the heir of promise. Mm -hmm. So anyways, and it says, and are built upon the foundations of the apostles and the prophets and Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the build, building fit, fit, <laughs> fitly framed together, grown unto the holy temple of the Lord, in whom all ye are also built together for the inhabitation of God through the Spirit. It is only through the Holy Spirit that we have been made a habitation we are a body of Messiah in the earth, fitted together in the unity of the Spirit. And it's only by the Spirit that we are being built up together to, to be a dwelling place for God, individually and corporately. This is the mystery of the gospel. And it says uh, in, uh, and this is, this is uh, all about the Messianic kingdom. This is all about the... Because he is the king, mm -hmm. and he is and and, and the fa and the father of spirits. So, you know the Bible says, "Subject yourselves to the father of spirits." So he, we, this is not about carnal works and 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 a carnal kingdom in a in, in this in this time and space. This is about coming into the the realm of the spirit in the realm of, of where he resides. That scripture that says uh, that in that your, your sin remains when the, uh, when the blind man, when they were disputing about the blind man and, and, and they were saying this, this must be talking about Yeshua. He must come from God because he, he had healed a blind man from birth. And, and it says that, uh, that he went, let me see, what is it? And he said that your sin, those who, those who, who do, what does see? Let's see if I can find him. It, I mean, it's almost a mix of words. Here it is, John 9. It's almost a mix of words. It says, and, and, and this it is, it's John 9, it says, They answer and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sin. And doth thou teach us and they ca and cast him out? And Jesus heard that they had cast him out. So they cast this blind man that was born, bl uh, born blind. Uh, they cast him out of the synagogue. And they said, was it because of his sin that, or the sin of his mother or the sins of his father that caused this man to be blind? And, it, and so this is the, the story. And, and so, let me go out for, further. So we'll give it. 
it says, he that answered, and go to the 27th verse, and he said, he that answered, I told you already, and ye did not hear, wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be a disciple? Then they reviled him and said, thou art a disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. See, they, they always threw Mo Moses as their mediator, as their advocate, as the, the, the one that gave them uh, some kind of recognition, some kind of uh, validity. They didn't call upon the Father. They called upon Moses. And the validity and the relationship of Moses was their anchor. So and, and they and they and they held to Moses instead of seeing who Yeshua was, seeing that he was the, what Moses spoke about. Moses spoke of him. He was a better a prophet would come, and you hear him. That you know they, they, they there was going to be a Messiah, but see because Moses's office was a messianic office. He was a king priest. Uh, and he was in the order of Melchizedek and of the Levitical order. And he stood in, as a mediator and proxy for the children of Israel. They had, they, had, they had removed themselves from the governance of the Father. Their governor was the law of Moses. Their governor was Moses. No longer was their father the, the creator, their fa their, uh, the creator of the universe was their governor. They didn't, they didn't identify with the Father of Heaven. And I have, I've taught about this before, that they did, they did, it was Jesus, it was Yeshua that brought this concept of Him, of, uh, of him being a Heavenly Father. And that Him and, and the Father were one. And that they, and that he had a relationship with the father and they, they were kind of beside themselves in, in a, in a quandary about why is he identifying with the father as he, as, as this real intimate relationship of son and father relationship. So they, this concept of, of, of the heavenly father or a heavenly creator being a father in an intimate relationship with one person was kind of out of their spectrum because they dealt with the father or the creator God through a mediator, through a man, through a high priest of Aaron. They did not deal with the father, the creator of all heaven and earth as an intimate relationship that they were there, that they were had to submit under as a son. They were servants, not sons, and they acted and treated God as a as a, a, a as a hired as a as a as a master. Do you see what I mean? As a as a lord, as a master, or as someone that is distant. An employer, basically, and they were a higher hand. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? They didn't understand this intimate relationship that a father and son, with, even though this all through scripture, it talks about the father-son relationship. About the Abraham being the father of our faith and Isaac being the son. And, and this intimate relationship, the son of promise and the Holy Spirit being this connecting point of, of of bringing in a intimate walk or an intimate relationship with that we can be, abide with the father and the son and the spirit in the unity of the spirit through intimacy see this was a foreign concept they serve god out of compulsion they serve god with transactions they you, you owe a debt I, if I, if I, if I serve you, God, then I require blessings. I require a uh, favor. I require uh, uh, something back. Do we not serve God in this concepts of transaction? Mm -hmm. You owe me God yeah. because I serve you. I put my wages in. I have done my service. Now you, now I'm coming for my payment. Uh -huh. This is exactly what God wanted to eliminate. 
He did not want a servant master relationship. Mm -hmm. Even though we honor God like we would honor our father, our earthly fathers or our earthly masters in reverence and fear. First, I believe you got to come through that pathway before you can start having an intimate walk with the, with the father, because there's, it starts with reverence. The beginning of wisdom is to fear God. You got to fear him and reverence him. And then he will come and make his abode with you. It's a, it's a beginning process, but it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. And God never wanted us to serve him through transaction, through, through, through this, this, uh, necessity of, of, of wanting him to bless us, wanting him to, uh, give to us now on a natural level or to make our lives somehow happy and satisfied and, and serve him out of compulsion, out of obligation. He's always wanted an intimate walk. So anyways, so they use Moses as a mediator. He, this, you know, that's why you say Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They, they petition the names that were under the authority at the time. The Melchizedek authority. But they could not see a sonship relationship and they still can't see that. So, so we are Moses' <laughs> disciples. He says, we know that God speaks unto Moses as this fellow. We know not from whence he is. The, the man answered and said unto him, why he, herein is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is, and yet he has opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but for any man who be a worshiper of God, he doth his will he heareth him. So, so he, him, he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes, one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he would do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou was, was altogether born in sin, and doth thou teach us? And they cast him out. So they, you know, they cast him out because they considered him a, a, a born in sin or he was a sinner or this this must the, you know they they if the fear or the expectation of what they were actually perceiving of Yeshua giving this man favor a man that was born blind they believe was cursed by sin and he, you know, there's a lot of religions out there that believe that you, the, the conditions that you live in are due to your, uh, your sins or the, or the, the actions of, of, of being, of, 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 of being in sin. And so, you know, make your bed, you, you made your bed, you lie in it. So everything that befalls you is because of your sin or your father's sins or whatever. So there, so I'm not going to give you mercy. I'm not going to give you grace. I'm not going to extend anything to you because I have already prejudged you or prejudged the situation and have, and have come to a conclusion that it, you deserve it. Like I said before, there's respectful sinners and then there are some pretty low down sinners. Mm -hmm. But we're all slaves and sinners, born in sin and in iniquity, fashion iniquity. And we're all on the same wavelength in God's eyes. There is no respecter of person in God's eyes. So we're all the same. The, 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 the cross, it, it, you know, eliminates that. Do you see what I mean? We're all, we're all fall short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. We all are born in sin. I don't care, you know, if you're a respected sinner or not a respected sinner, you're a sinner. Mm -hmm. And, and because you may be reaping something or your children may be reaping something or, or what, or whatever the situation, we all, whatever, what plagues us, whatever comes our way, not necessarily always our fault, but it can be our fault 
But either way, the cross eliminates that. Mm -hmm. Because if we put our body on that altar, he removes the sin. You know, the Bible says that a woman was bound 18 years of, with an infirmity. 18 years she was bound for, with an infirmity before she was loosed from that infirmity. And when you look at the 18 or the 8, God is showing us this perfect day, this perfect uh, example of his eternal kingdom. It doesn't matter what condition and how long we have suffered in that condition. It doesn't matter if it is something that is hidden or something that is expressed outwardly because there's a lot of defilement, a lot of sins that are hidden in the secret parts of our being that God sees as just as detestable as someone that is suffering outwardly in the body due to this sinful world. And we're bound by sin and the arbitrators of sin and death that worketh in our members. If it manifests itself or not, we're still slaves to sin, sold under sin in bondage to sin i don't care how respectful or how glamorous or how beautiful or how eloquent how intelligent you are you are a sinner mm -hmm. and there in god's eyes you are sin and vile until the blood of yeshua touches you mm -hmm. and reaches out to you and releases you from the bondages of sin and, and loose you from the slavery of sin. So anyways, so the, so so was this guy born in sin and doth he teach us and he cast him out. And Jesus heard that they had cast him out. They cast out. The, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? And he answered and said, Who is this Lord that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him and it is he that talketh with thee down. So God revealed, Yeshua revealed that he was the son of God. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. So this showing that he had, he was divine because he did not prevent the guy from worshiping him. He did not prevent uh, him to, uh, to uh, because even Peter and Paul said, do not fall down and worship me. We are mere men. So this is showing uh, the divinity that Yeshua, Jesus, was uh, God in the flesh. And, and that he was the son of God. And that he came from the, uh, the unity of the accordness of God. The polarity of God. And he, uh, and he you know, and, the, and because of his position as being not only the son of man and the son of God and the son of David... He did not prevent this man to worship him even in this life. And Jesus said, For judgment I have come into the world, that they which see not might see. So for this judgment I have come into the world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? And Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, you should have no sin. So if you were blind, if you cannot see, then you should have no sin. But now ye are, now ye say, We see, therefore your sins remain. So their sin remains because they looked on things carnally, they looked on things physically, they had they had no spiritual discernment. They had no spiritual uh, uh, understanding or enlightenment or uh, or acknowledgement. So their sins remained because they had already petitioned to uh, uh, Moses as their mediator. And they were not willing to come under Yeshua or the sonship or the, or the uh, understanding of what he, what he represents. They, they didn't want to come under him as being the Messiah. They didn't want to see him as, as because they were, uh, they, they didn't want to have to give up what they had already had established in the echelons of their own 
uh, in their own society, in their in their society, and in, in their own ruling of the people. So they they use religious works, they use the law of Moses, and they uh, they and they used it as a weapon to bind the people and put heavy burdens and feathers upon them, and anything that was outside of what they could do, and and what they and what they felt they had religious piety. And because of their religious piety and pride and, and, and their uh, self-exaltation, self they deny the Messiah. They deny their own freedom. Because Yeshua says, because, uh, because you cannot see who I am. Those scrolls were written of me. You can't see me, the Son of God, the Messiah that is in your scriptures. You are blind and your sins remains to you so you see everything on the external you see things from a selfish point of view so if you see things from a selfish point of view you'll never humble yourself and see the 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 reality because the spirit realm is more real than this physical realm and so because everything that we see on the physical realm is confusion and mixed with lies but everything that is spiritual and discerning those things are the things that we and this word this word is truth mm -hmm. and if you knew the word if you knew like that woman that was bound with the issue of blood and we reached out and touched the hem of his garment, she knew her word she knew he was she was the messiah he knew she knew he was the messiah he knew she knew that there was healing in his wings and she and because if if he was not the Messiah, and, and she did not believe that he, the Messiah would come and 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 and, and relieve her, and, and heal her because he came with healing in his wings. If she did not understand that and believe that by faith, not by what she saw, because she saw just a mere man, she saw a rabbi, a teacher. She just saw a man in the crowd that had eloquent words and was drawing a crowd. But if she did not believe beyond the physical and believe the word of God in her heart that opened up her spiritual eyes to see him beyond the physical, she would have never been healed. She would have never been delivered. She would come because if, she, if, if he was not the Messiah, she could have been severely punished because she would have made a rabbi, a man unclean, unfit to be able to go and, uh, and, and, and worship at the temple. She would cause him to be in, 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 te, in Tehor, in, in an unclean, defiled state that was not able to go and worship at the temple. And that would that would have cost her because women were not then had not have status. Women did not have a voice. Women did not have, uh, you know, any kind of uh, uh, any kind of position that could. That, so everything that had to do with that temple, that was their identity. That was their that was what they identified with, mm -hmm. and that status. And that, and then being not being able to go up and to offer sacrifices and to uh, go up to be taught or be in the in the presence of the synagogues and the teachers and not be able to be a part of all of that kind of hierarchy. Would, would, and, and by the law, she could have been punished for causing someone to become unclean, ritually unclean, and defiled, and keep him from. Uh, you know, presenting himself at the temple. So this this would have this would have been a very bad thing for her. But she, by faith, she saw something. Her eyes were open. Her blindness was taken off. The scales were removed, and she saw him in the the volume of the scrolls. She saw him in the scriptures, and she took and she stood it out in faith and touched him. And because she knew he what who he was, she was healed. Mm -hmm. Which, when the Pharisees saw him, rejected him. And so their sins and their blindness uh, remains because they only see things in the physical. They only see things in the carnal. They only see things in, in what they perceive 
and not by by this the by the by the word they are not being uh, inspired by by scripture so it says therefore your sins remains because it takes humility you must humble yourself before god will exalt you and it says in matthew Matthew 12, it says, it says, how much then is the better than a sheep that, that wherefore it is lawful to dwell on the Sabbath day? Then saith he to the man, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched forth and it was restore whole like the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him and want to doubt. So they, they, because they did not want to lose their position. And when Yeshua came, setting the captives free, setting people from the bondages of sin and death, the, he, he, uh, because, because he, he didn't, he threatened the establishment there. And the and and because of the religious piety, Satan was able to get into these men and and keep these people bound up because the the temple became a a a, a money making institution. It mm -hmm. became a place of prestige and hierarchy, and so and and we and the people became peasants and servants to the officers and the priestly line in the corrupt priestly line in the temple right so all right yeah so we we uh, so they were rejecting even though god was on the seventh day re represents to be whole to be complete to may be made perfect they were rejecting him his, his ability as uh, to set the captive free they were resisting that satan did not want to see the people go free. He did not, he had them bound in sickness and, and disease and ailments and, 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 and in sin. And that's where he wants to keep you in bondage. And when he was liberating them, showing him the messianic kingdom, showing the being in Messiah on the seventh day, the day of rest, the day of, of, of completion, the day of being complete in Christ, they, where there's freedom, this this liberty, the law of liberty being under that ruling factor, under the kingdom of heaven, this, the the satanic and the world resisted that, and it still does today. And it says in the twenty eighth verse of Matthew twelve, it says, "But I have cast out devils by the spirit of God. Then the kingdom of God has come upon you." So by this, by so if 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 casting out devils and healing the sick and, and liberating the people, it, it it is part of the kingdom of God. It's part of it's part of this spirit that is in, in the indwelling presence of God being manifested in you, and and it outwardly expresses through the miraculous through through this liberation that we can experience through the spirit and this is why it's the law of liberty because we are governed by a higher law and that's the law of the spirit in christ jesus that sets us free from the law of sin and death and that we can be made free and made whole and so we're not under the bondages enslavement of satan as long as we put the flesh on the altar, as long as we put uh, our flesh where it needs to be. In Romans 12, <laughs> it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And not be conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that is good and acceptable will. It says, I'm sorry, that ye may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is the perfect will of God? For all believers to work and operate in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. To be in, to, to, to experience the freedom that God has given us in 
liberating us from the from the law of sin and death to liberating us from the kingdom of darkness this this is the perfect will of god that we come into the messiah's rest and work and operate from the kingdom from within uh so it's a uh, and it, and it also goes down for we have many members and one body and all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body and Messiah and every one member of another. So having this gift, so we're, we're one body and Messiah. This is this new man. This is being, we're being conformed to be joined together to making this body, making being new creatures that are forming into this new body of Messiah in the earth that is working and operating in accordance to the kingdom of heaven. So it says, uh, Matthew, well, let's go first, Peter, first Peter. I got some written, some scriptures down. It says, let's do two and four. It says four and 10. It says to whom coming as, unto living stones disallowed indeed of men but chosen of god and precious ye also a lively stone are built up a spiritual house a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by jesus christ wherefore also he is contained in the scriptures behold i lay in zion a chief corner stone so elected he is the we are being built on him he is that firm foundation he is that proof. Like I said, he. What, what did I read before? We are being built on the prophets, the apostles, and on Jesus Christ, the prophetic word of the kingdom that once was the kingdom of Israel. All everything that that tra transpired during the time of the old was showing this kingdom of Israel in the natural that Yeshua elevated as king and priest in the heaven to establish a spiritual Israel mm -hmm. that is not without observation. We do not know. It's not been known to us who are the, who is this Israel of God? Who's the spiritual key, you know, this, the, the elect of God or the king or the ones that are going to be sheep and not goats wheat or tares only god ha has it in his own you know in his own foreknowledge and his own uh, knows who belongs to him he said no one thing the lord knows who belong to him i'm not i don't believe in the, this election that god you know that predestinates us but no we are elected he already knows because he foreknows us from the beginning of the wor world and predestinates us to, but it's not that we are not without free will. He just knows who belongs to him and who doesn't. But we still have to work and act and walk out within our free will to submit. We got, it's all about submission. So he said, wherefore also it is contained in scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect and precious, that he that believeth on him shall not come be confound. Unto, unto you therefore which I believe he is precious, but unto which is disobedient the stone which the builders disallow, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of fence, but even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereby also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises him, who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now a people of God, the Israel of God, because this Yeshua only rules the kingdom of Israel, but now this kingdom of Israel is in the unseen realm, which had not obtained mercy, but now has obtained mercy. So it says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, and which war against the soul. So we're, so the body, what is also says, having your conversations honest among the Gentiles, that whereby they speak against you as evil doers, that they may be, that they may by your good works, which they shall, uh, shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. 
that day of visitation is the the day that uh you know that you know even uh Israel on their day of visitation when Yeshua came they rejected their day of visitation when they were when Messiah came and presented himself he said I only come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel he came to Israel first but they have rejected his their day of visitation we sh we should not De, you know, reject our day of visitation. It's appointed to one man to die, and then the judgment, the Bible says, is appointed to every man. So we got to work out our own salvation. We, the Bible says about the provocation in Hebrews, you know, we are not the day of provocation. It's the same thing. We, you know, we, we, we so we so uh, forget that we think we have time, but when, but really we don't, this time is fleeting. And so we're not to, we're, we're not to re reject the voice that comes from heaven, reject the day of our own provocation, our own revealing. So anyways, that God makes himself known to us. And it says, you know, we, we need to take heed to that. Uh, it says in first Peter, well, first Peter one, uh, and one go. So our bodies are being presented on an altar of flesh, the body, the, this vile body of a base nature is being put on the altar as living sacrifices holy and acceptable to God so that the kingdom of God that worketh within may manifest itself through this per the perfection that is come, come that comes through Messiah that the, we're being built up as a spiritual as a body as a one new man as a perfect man in Christ we must be made perfect to be joined with mm -hmm. a common unity with other believers that are being made perfect in Messiah it says, perfect, it said, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered through Pontius Pilate, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bethsaida, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God of our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to our abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection. So we're dead in trespasses. We're being raised up in Messiah through the power of resurrection. He was the first from the dead. We are spirit man is being raised up and we will be raised up with him at the end. So the res so this is the this is the resurrection that we that we all get to be partakers of the first resurrection where uh, where when he comes and claims us the the redeemed of the earth to the an inheritance incorruptible but we have to forget we can't forget about the resurrection of the spirit man we always looked for the resurrection of the dead, but God had raised our spirit man from the dead. Just like Adam, they said, once you eat of this fruit, you will surely die. Well, it almost took a thousand years. He was he lived for 930 years before he died, but his spirit man died immediately. He was cut off. The life force was cut off immediately when he took of the forbidden fruit. All right. So when we take of the righteous fruits, which Jesus was the first fruits, the first fruits of the earth, he was the first fruit that was offered. And when we take of his first fruits, then we are raised up in newness of lives. And then we will, we will see the fulfillment of that in the end days when he resurrects the dead. But he is the first fruit of all creation. He's the first fruit of all re of the resurrection. And he brought all those souls back from Abraham's bosom. He went to preach in, in, in hell and, 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 
and 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 Abraham's bosom to call for and it took his blood to bring them into the presence of God like I mentioned before so to an inheritance incorruptible undefiled that fadeth not away reserved for you in heaven so to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you so we are being raised up built up grown up like i mentioned before to be able to go into this perfect day the eighth day and with that where we will abide with him forever reserved for us in heaven is part of our inheritance who are kept by the power of god through the faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time wherefore ye greatly rejoice thou know for a season if if need be Ye are in, he in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trials of your faith be much more precious than the gold that perished, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom have not seen, yet ye love. Yes, in whom through not now ye see him not, Ye believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. So, it, you know, it is the saving of our soul. It is the renovating of our soul. So we're saving our souls to be able to dwell with a holy God and that we will be able to be resurrected in the last days. So, we, you know, it, it's not just enough that our spirit man becomes alive, but God, God is wanting to deal with you on a personal level. Mm -hmm. And your person, your life is your soul, who you are, who, yeah. who, you, I, who, who you are as a, as a being, mm -hmm. you know, we all are, um, you know, we're all not the same. We are, we are all, we all have different fingerprints. We're all designed just a little bit different. We are, we have a uniqueness about us that, uh, that, that God, you know, you know, intricately designed for each character of each person. And he never wants us to lose our identity but our identity has been obscured. Our, our identity has been taint, uh, tainted with. Our identity has been um, uh, mishandled through through the corruption of, of, of the serpent in the garden. But that is what God is restoring. He's restoring your identity. He's restoring your identity in him. But he's restoring your character. He's restoring your nature. He's restoring you. He, he doesn't want you to be. He doesn't want you to emulate something he wants you to be who you are what he created you from the original your uniqueness your talents your abilities your strengths these are all gifts and callings that are not without written that god does not they're irrevocable they are not that you can't god does not irrevoke them he develops them but they get obscured when we do them and act in our abilities outside of God. And then they become, they become perverted. We, we've got to stay within those, the, the realm of, of, yes. of, of who he is mm -hmm. and his nature and his character to be able to actually exhibit the 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 talents and the ability and the wisdom and the knowledge and the skills that God has given each one of us because outside of that it will become perverted and corrupted and 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 distorted in in our spectrum of a holy righteous God right will become lifted up in pride which God resists so that's why we have to give all our talents abilities and stuff to him let him create in us an identity that is that is uh, is formed up like unto Messiah Yeshua, like unto his nature, and to and his and his sacrifice of obedience. We, we can't do nothing without him. So we, you know, we've got to have that his nature within us to be able to be, to be this unique individual for God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
So it is the saving of our soul. So God is saving our emotions. He's saving our minds. He's saving our what he has created. He's created us to be unique individuals. He wants us to be individual people that are connected with him. Not, you know, he doesn't want us. He wants us to connect it in, in, in his life. We are hid. Our lives are hid in him. So this is why we can't, we don't walk outside of him. If we walk outside of him, then we, we will be, we will become self-seeking and we'll become, uh, full of pride and full of things that are, that God resists. Of which salvation the prophets has inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching that or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them did signify searching the what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which from the spirit of Messiah, which was in them did signify when it testified before beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that should follow unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us that, that they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ruach, Holy Spirit sent down from heaven, which things the angels desired to look upon. Okay. Search, they searched the manners of times with the spirit of Christ. So they were in the spirit of Christ, which was with them, signify and testify before him. The prophets in the Old Testament signify and, pro, and beforehand this mystery of Messiah in Christ and the glory that should, that, that should follow being in Christ. So they, they testify it. They, they, they spoke about before, beforehand unto whom was revealed that that unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported so they uh it says right there i want to go back it says the manner of time the spirit of christ which was in them did send us up so the spirit of christ was in them so the spirit was they were in the bible says that christ is in all in you all and all of us all. So the, they were, they spoke in accordance to the spirit of, of, of Messiah in alignment with the spirit. Does that make sense? And that spoke and other, they, as the Holy Spirit moved upon them, they, they would speak what, what was, was given to them, but it took the blood of Yeshua. It was by faith that these things were in operation, but there was going to be a day that these things that they had tasted were going to be, have a full measure, a fuller impact, that it was going to be uh, more uh, sustaining, that uh, just that the Holy Spirit would not just move upon them as he saw fit and, and as they said, but that they would have this aboding aspect that they could be, intertwine or interconnected with with the kingdom of heaven with the spirit of god that they that that, that they could interact with this the with the spirit of, of christ or messiah and sure that there would be this this connection that would be from that would that would not be severed does that make sense so and this is the gospel this is the gospel that we preach this is the gospel of the new testament that Christ in you, the hope of glory, but now, but it was, it's not something that, that, that is something that we, we carry with us. It's not something that is moved upon us. It's something that we carry with us. We become that human temple or that human tabernacle, a, a dwelling place. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, and, the, and that was so different from what they had experienced. Even though they had, you know, the, the prophets went up to a high mountain or the servants of God went up to a high mountain and they would have to sacrifice a lamb on a Melchizedek altar. And, and, that, and that the soul of that animal covered them so they could interact with God. So that soul of the animal became their shield. 
which represents Messiah. This is just a foreshadowing of Messiah that would cover us so we can interact with God. So they, they talked with God, you know, pretty much face to face, or they had this interaction. They had this connection with the heavenly realm, but that, that lamb had to be sacrificed first, mm -hmm. right? They had to be covered. Mm -hmm. So, but they had to, they had to go <laughs> to a place to do that. And, but now that presence is with us every day. We, we don't have to go up to a high mountain to tap into it. Mm -mm. We, we have the, we have this accessibility that has been given us that we can go boldly through the throne room of God without sacrificing a lamb, without going up to a high mountain mm -hmm. and, and, and offering up our sacrifice and, and, and taking this and the blood, draining the blood and offering the blood as, as and the life of that soul of that animal became the the uh the propitiation became the uh the uh the one that, that stood in place of them because that that innocent blood represented Christ represented Yeshua's blood that actually mediated for them mm -hmm. And these were the, you know, I'm talking about people like uh, the, you know, like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm talking about uh, Solomon. I'm talking about David. I'm talking about people who, even David said, please do not take thy Holy Spirit with me. Because those, the ones that were of the Melchizedek order had this connection with God. They did have the Holy Spirit dwelling with them. You know what I mean? There were exceptions, but it wasn't the rule. Do you see? It wasn't given to all men. Moses was a, a human tabernacle in himself that had, was a dwelling place. But now we have this given to us in, in, in volumes. Even the Gentiles, even the, the uh, foreigners and the strangers now can be partakers of this. Mm -hmm. Not just, uh, just the Israelites, the ones that were keeping themselves set apart from the pagan idols and the pagan culture that were set apart for God so God could interact with a people with a pure decent bloodline decent bloodline that wasn't so profane that wasn't so you know what I mean so defiled not given under the full uh, control of Satan that were that made themselves set apart they were not mixed in their bloodline so that God could cover them they, you know, they were not fully t given over to the realm of darkness like some of the pagan cultures were. They were set apart. They were set apart, but they didn't make them kadosh. It didn't make them purified or sanctified in their conscience or in their soul. Mm -hmm. It just, that's why the blood of the animal had to cover them. They had to, they, it, it would act as their, as the advocate or the propitiation on their behalf to interact with the holy god so but now we don't have to we have this access through christ that gives us and the angels it says and the angels wanted to look upon that and it was interesting to note that an angel would appear to a woman you know in the old testament or in the new even in mary or elizabeth or certain figures but but those who have the Melchizedek order had direct access to God. Those who were in the Melchi, God's represent the uh, one that represented God to bring reconciliation on the behalf, the one that stood as king and priest for the people, the one that they called upon their name as the authority of heaven that represented them. Had, had you know, he told Moses, you know, he told. Uh, Aaron and Miriam that you know I speak to Moses mouth to mouth he had the breath of life in him he had this relationship with God on an intimate level so there was a infillment with those people because they were covered by Messiah they were they were covered they came into Christ they came into the realm of the eternal by faith and so that makes that set them apart from the masses, from the from the corporate Israel that had to go and offer their sacrifice at the temple, and they had to have a a man stand in proxy for them and mediate for them. 
So, but the angels desire to look upon this, this mystery that those, that, that the Holy Spirit would abide in humans. This, that the, that the Holy Spirit would, would renovate and resurrect the fallen tabernacles of David and be a dwelling place. And they, so a dwelling place for the most high. So the angels desire to look upon this. How is this going to be? How is this going to uh, transpire? You know, this is, this was a mystery even to the angels. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end of for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And obedient children, not fashion yourself according to the former lust in your ignorant, but as he which hath called you in holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy as I am holy. And if ye call on the Father who without respect of person judgeth according to every man's work, passes the time of your sojourning here in a fear, for as much as ye have known that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as of silver and gold from your vain conversation receiving by tradition from your father, but with the precious blood of Christ uh, as, a, of, as of a lamb without blemish and spot who very verily was foreordained before the foundations of the world. He was foreordained by the foundation. This is why he was slain from the foundations of the world mm -hmm. to be able to bring these certain men, these certain men into this realm of Christ so that the Holy Spirit could actually interact with him face to face and breathe upon them and give them the inspiration. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it was not the common thing. It wasn't poured out on every man. It was not given to every man. But it has now been opened up to us to be that we can receive those who come into this kingdom, the, this order of Melchizedek, the kingdom of heaven. Then we can p obtain this gift that has been given to humans that are been, who are wanting to take upon the blood of Messiah, the incorruptible seed and be and make this new man alive so that he can house the holy spirit so that the breath of life can connect with that man not with flesh it connects with that man and re it resuscitates that man and it revives that man and it and it and it develops and 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 and, and works within that man mm -hmm. that's why I, it says that the, that that the spirit groaneth within man. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I know I'm getting late, but I'm going to try to get through this. Uh, and gave the glory. Uh, uh, says who who he was foreordained before the foundations of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory. That your faith and hope might be in God, seeing ye have purified your soul in obeying the truth through the Spirit. You obey, seeing that you purify the soul only through the incorruptible seed, the blood of Yeshua. Can you purify the soul? I cannot purify the soul. It is esoteric. It cannot be seen. It can't be observed. It's not physical. It's mm -hmm. it's it's spiritual. And only only spiritual things can. Uh, and the spiritual aspects of the blood of Yeshua can purify the soul. Me physically can't sanctify, purify my own soul. All I can do is yield to the process of the sanctification of the spirit mm -hmm. that has been provided through the blood of Yeshua. That's it. And everything else I have to yield to. So seeing that you purify your soul in obeying the truth through the spirit, we obey the truth through the spirit, through the spirit as the spirit reveals to us our, our inadequacies, our, our shortcomings, our failures, our sins. We can purge ourselves from this realm of Dartmouth so we can be liberated in the spirit until the unfailing love of the brethren, seeing that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. So this love is in connection with the spirit which is in con that that is purifying our soul. So as the as love is being developed, so so forth will the fruits of the fruits of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness, and long suffering, 
these things in patience, we will also endure because we have the love of God shed upon our hearts through, through, through the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That, that's not necessarily outward. That's not necessarily something that we've experienced physically. But within the inner man, I can experience peace, joy, and, and righteousness from the work that is being done inside me. But it's a, willing of, it's a yielding of wills. And so, and, and taking upon that incorruptible seed, which has been given through the Yeshua, he is that in, that that source. He's got to he's got to be the seed that is implanted in you, that must be gestated, and germinated to be to make and grown up in full stature. So, so it says, whom for he foreknew he foreordained foreordained before the foundation of the world by the manifest manifest in these last days who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. And God raised him from the dead. Yeshua said, I have power to, you know, to, to lay my life down and raise it up again. He had the power to raise himself from the dead because him being a deity, him being divine. But he's showing the act of submission the act of surrendering his will, act of waiting upon God, faith, mm -hmm. that he would not leave his soul into corruption. He would, he would not leave his, his son, his soul in, 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 in darkness, in, in corruption. He waited patiently mm -hmm. for his deliverance mm -hmm. from God, the Father, to raise him from the dead just like we have to wait patiently for our resurrection from the dead. He calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light, but we've got to wait patiently, put the works to action, right. do what is necessarily that we can obtain this resurrection of new life. Mm -hmm. He had to wait upon God patiently and believe on his word that he would not leave his soul in corruption mm -hmm. that he would be faithful to do what his will could could you should do it absolutely but he was here to fulfill all things for man can yes to fulfill all obedience to fulfill all righteousness mm -hmm. so that we could be partakers of that righteousness if we by faith wait patiently for it Seeing ye have purified your soul, obeying the truth of the Spirit unto the refrained love of the brethren, seeing that ye love one another with pure heart fervently, born, being born again and not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, the word made flesh, both hand in hand, working simultaneously in your soul to purify and of your soul, which will convert your soul and change you from glory to glory which liveth and abideth forever. From, for all flesh is grass, and all the glory of man is a flower. The grass wither, and the flower thereof falleth, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this word, which by the gospel is preached unto you. So next time I want to talk about what the angels, I kind of glimpsed on it, but I, wanted to, I want to show more about this realm of the spirit, this abiding presence, uh, this promise of the spirit and and next time I'm going to show you that even the Bible says that Yeshua was uh, was uh, you know was full of the spirit without measure but he also exhibit the gifts we see the gifts operating in Yeshua and a lot of people uh, kind of you know debate on did you, you on um, the the gift of tongues and which i believe is the initial evidence of that the spirit of god is dwelling in you i believe that because you have to have proof that the spirit abides in you and it's all about the unity of the spirit and the, the tongues brings unification it it's it, it, it it goes beyond the carnal mind mm -hmm. and so it and it brings brings a body together in unity when we pray we could pray in our understanding and we can pray in the spirit. 
and we can pray with tongues of angels or with tongues of man or tongues of man with our own carnal reasoning. So these are gifts. But one thing that we do not see is, and we do not uh, see is that Yeshua also prayed in the spirit. And he, and I believe he muttered or he, uh, the Bible uh, says that they would uh, come out of the nation with stammering lips. And I believe that the Lord showed me that he did have this gift of tongues by the indwelling presence of the Spirit because everything that we have to obtain in Christ, he fulfilled and also had. But the things that Messiah did before I said... The things that Yeshua did, he came under the law and he had to obey everything under the law, even though he worked simultaneously with the kingdom of heaven under the authority of the Melchizedek, he still had to fulfill all things under the law. The law, the spirit was not given to all men, but God made a way that he opened that pathway up that we all could receive. And I believe that even though openly, he may not have spoke in an unknown language, but I believe it is hidden in scriptures to show us that he did speak and he did utter, utter things that was according to his spirit because the Bible says he was the tabernacle. He said in three days, I will tear down this tabernacle and I will raise it up again in three days. Remember, and he was concerning his body. So everything that we as believers, as human temples made without hands, Yeshua presented and offered. So he was simultaneously working within the temple that was erected. And he was also working within his human temple. And we can gleam, and I believe there's scripture, there's the scriptures that show this gift that was given to not only to believers as the initial, have you not received the Holy Spirit since you believe and they spoke with new tongues? I believe Yeshua also, before it was outpoured, before it was fulfilled, it was good. He also had this, this in his own tabernacle. And I'm going to talk on that next time because because he was working with, I believe he was working with both when the old, in the old promises within the, the erect temple of God, within the old law, he was born under law. But I also believe he was also showing us the new and living way that he was going to provide and open up for all those who would come into Christ. And, and the gifts that, that the gifts of the spirit are, are for our taking. Mm -hmm. They are for our, they're to, 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 they're for our, they're for our taking to be able to show, like I said, in, in the, the, the finger of God, the spirit of God worketh in us, the kingdom of God working from within. These gifts are bestowed upon those who are willing to work and operate by faith and, and, and exercise the kingdom of heaven from within. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says out, out of your belly should rivers of living water shall flow. There are promises and the, the, God, the promises of God are yes and amen. And everything that has been given us is not for our benefit, but is to benefit others to, to be able to work and operate in accordance to God's will in the earth. Let his will be done in, or in the earth as it is in heaven. And we've got a parallel with that, that kingdom of heaven to work and operate with him. So on that, I'm going to end and we're going to, we're going to finish up next time in Yeshua's name. Amen.